All right, guys. So, uh, started my last video where I was showing how to replace the hinges on a go fast camper. I had mentioned that I was going to do a review. Um, and so I'm going to get walk you guys around kind of just the camper itself. So you can see it, um, understand it better. Maybe if you're looking to buy one, but basically, uh, everything's made in house over there. Um, I think every, every, they do every single thing except make the sheets and maybe sew the tents, um, as well as powder coating. That was the last thing that I had heard at least. Um, but everything else on here, they machine in house, super proud of the robotics they use and the machinery they have. And they make some really, really cool stuff. Um, so I'd seen on Instagram, someone had made a comment about the hinge on the tent failing, which that's this guy right here. I don't think this thing's ever gonna fail. Um, super, super beefy, it's aluminum. Um, and I think that part of the tent is probably one of the coolest parts from like a design and engineering standpoint, but also looks, um, looks really good. So they sell some accessories for them too. So like this is a, a wind skid, looks a little different without it. Um, those are called beef bars up there. And you can see that the beef bar mounts to the channel that they have. Um, this channel is not the same as like an 8020 channel, which you can find online, but um, basically very similar. So you can slide things in. They've got some hardware that doesn't require you to slide. You can kind of put it in the slot and then rotate it. It's pretty cool. Um, so walking around the front of my truck, kind of see, and I'll, I'll post some pictures obviously so you can get a look for it. Uh, the thing hanging off the end over there is an awning and that's attached with two of their awning brackets. Um, if you're wondering what kind of awning that is, it's a Thule. Um, they go for about 900 bucks for that size, uh, but it's really nice. It's hard, so it's super, super, super quiet. Um, but basically you have two windows on both sides. Um, this one has the large window or the large door, they call it, for the tent. And that allows you to set up a ladder and climb inside of it. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, the new ones actually allow that on both sides, um, which gives you kind of a nice window. And then this side as well has another big door. So you get some pretty nice views with, with that one right there and that guy. Um, it's probably gonna be really nice now that they've got one on the other side. Um, from behind the GFC, you can tell it's kind of just, it's a frame, um, really nice, all welded together frame. Um, things are reinforced. You can see that. Um, and these are steel and the rest of it's pretty much aluminum. Um, doors on it, these guys right here, these are aluminum. Um, you've got a seal right here that uh, tries to seal kind of between the tailgate and the camper. And then there's seals running along this, which push up against the frame right here. Kind of where you can see that line is. That's probably from just some slight wear. Um, but you know, it's not, it's not a hundred percent dust proof. I wouldn't say it's going to be as dust proof as a standard like snug top camper, but it, uh, it does a pretty good job of keeping the dust out. Um, definitely keeps things cleaner than just throwing them in your bed. Um, trying to zoom out for you guys, a wider angle. Um, but yeah, so you can see I've got some wiring hanging down here. They can give you wiring for a brake light. Um, I just sold this camper, so I've got the keys zip tied here for the new owner. I've got a Baja light here, um, two Baja lights there. One's a red, one's a white. Um, I've got those on each panel. I'll show you guys a picture of kind of what that looks like at camp. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, you know, and panels closed. Latches are, are pretty nice. Um, nice click. Um, hinges attached by rivets. And you guys can see the awning bracket here. So that's pretty much it as far as looks go. Um, kind of what it's got. And you can throw any, all kinds of accessories up there. I had some max tracks up there. Um, again, really nice aluminum over here. Um, this little guy right there, uh, third party makes that. That's to basically create your own awning. Um, or rain fly using the material that GFC gives you. Um, and a couple of uh, tent poles they sell. Uh, this guy is for the awning to, uh, to basically roll it out, um, which was a pain for me because I have 
wider fenders and so holes right there and straight down I've got my wider loss and uh, as you're cranking it you're kind of hitting your bedside so you gotta do it pretty slow um, as far as sleeping goes um, they call it bunk mode and this is kind of the the preference thing that uh, I'll talk about so I camped the first I don't know three times or so three nights um, maybe it's like five nights by myself uh, no girlfriend and uh, Super, super nice. Uh, just crawl up, pull the panels there, or you can leave it in, in bunk mode. Um, and it was nice because you can just climb up and get down when you want. Um, if you wanted to leave a heater down here and let that go, it'd probably hit the top pretty well. But when you've got two people and uh, all the panels are sealed up, you gotta move a panel to get down, right? So middle of the night, gotta go pee or early, early morning. It's usually when I have to go. Um, you gotta like remove a panel. First, you gotta like slide back off of the panel, remove it, put it somewhere where it's not gonna disturb the other person sleeping, which is pretty impossible. And then climb down, open the door weird by yourself and open the tailgate by reaching over. Um, closing the tailgate's probably the toughest part about um, going to sleep at night. Uh, I've seen someone do a, uh, like a lanyard right here so that they can pull on it when they close it, which makes it way easier. But standing there, or sitting there, or slouching, and then lifting this up um, isn't that easy. So just something to keep in mind. I'd probably throw one right there. Even if you have a GFC and you're watching this, put a lanyard there um, so you can close it easier. And then as far as closing things up at night, you can't really lock the tent um, at night when you go to bed. So I used to have a snug top and I slept in it a couple times. It's a short bed. And that was actually, you know, just a nice peace of mind to be able to lock everything up. But you can't do that with this. Um, the way it's mounted, you can see it's attached to the bed rail. Um, they've got their own brackets, which are probably stronger than shit. Um, and to be honest, this thing is, the yeah, other big thing is durability. And I've got fiberglass fenders and driven the truck pretty damn hard. I've jumped it with a camper. I've been with people who've jumped with a camper. Nobody's really had an issue with it. Um, as long as everything's been bolted down. But you shake this and the entire truck shakes. Not the camper, not the glass, not the bedsides. So the mounting's pretty damn good. Um, there's some eyelets over here that have been added so you can tie things down. Those are the eyelets right there. You can strap stuff down. Um, I was actually, I was putting my spare there, which is why you see a little bit of rubbing. Um, but I was running a strap through that there. I've got a bed rug in here which is actually really nice for keeping dust out. Um, you know, I would say the sides of the tent probably don't have that much dust or leak that much dust, um, but the bed rail does. Um, and the, the bed rug does a good job of keeping that out. So um, a lot of people, and I think when it comes, the GFC, um, this panel is usually horizontal. And then you've got the two little squares that are lined up here and here. And I've found that it's much easier to get in and out if you turn that one sideways and climb it on the side and put the other two in. So basically the first person that's out there is on their platform. There's no panels and uh, they can lay their sleeping bag up there. And then when it's time for bed, throw that panel on right there. And there's one more panel. You climb up and sit on that, get your sleeping bag sorted out. Um, and that makes it easier. Um, all, the temp all the windows and stuff do have screens. Um, and they're all zippered and uh, the tent is attached by buttons which I think is one of the negatives of this tent if you can see how it's kind of wavy up there um, if you have a light on and there you're by water it's just buggy out and there's you know flies or mosquitoes or whatever um, enough light escapes from there to where bugs will find a way in in addition to that um, if it's really cold you'll feel some air coming through that. Now these are made in Montana and you know I knew that before I bought it and so I assumed kind of people you know they're from Montana right so they can handle the cold and uh, I was actually pretty chilly in this tent when it was really cold so we camped tonight uh, right next to a lake and it was 14 degrees and you could definitely feel the cold air coming in. We had the heater buddy going down here for a bit to warm things up and very quickly if you put your hand up there you could feel it which it's one of the reasons why I moved away from the tent. Um, girlfriend likes it to be really, really warm. I don't mind the cold necessarily, but 14 is very cold, <laughs> for me at least. Um, 
and so having that tent that wasn't necessarily as weatherproof um, or windproof, airproof, I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, it just wasn't ideal. So that's one thing. Um, I'm gonna close this panel right now. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna close it because I have a sleeping pad on top. Um, but something else to keep in mind is if you run like a drawer system or you've got a platform there, um, the gap between this right here and the tailgate, if you're a bigger person, um, it's pretty tight. So if you were to you know, have a deck system, you gotta climb on top of the deck system from the tailgate and under that. So you're doing some like downward dog yoga stuff. Um, but yeah, as far as, as far as climbing up, um, climb up on the tailgate and then uh, you're in the tent. So that right there, that bungee is used to keep the tent fabric taut um, so that in the wind, right, it's not flapping. I will tell you right now, this is the quietest tent I've ever had and it's not close. Um, wedge camper, huge fan. And the reason for that is that if it's ever windy, you basically point this end of the tent at the wind and all the wind will hit the wedge and blow it over you quietly. Um, sometimes you get wind coming from everywhere. <laughs> Like if you're in the desert or in a canyon or something. And uh, it still actually does really, really well. So, other cool thing about it being as well built as it is, if you have it deployed um, and you don't have a ladder, and I'm gonna stop real quick. I just switched to wide and I'm not super great at editing, so enjoy that. Um, but you can see right there, there's an air gap. Um, but as I was saying is if, if you, let's say the wind changes on you or you wanna move the tent, you can actually leave it open and just hop in the truck and, and drive it. Um, now the really cool thing about it is you get, you know, you're gonna put a lot of stuff in your bed when you're camping probably, but you can move everything out of the way and basically stand and have your entire full bed space to stand in. Um, I think that's one of the coolest things. You get the panel right here and then I'm gonna put this down for a second. So I just took the two panels that fill this hole right here and slid them over there. And then this guy is another pad and put him up there and then you've got this hard surface too. So if you wanted, like for a bit, I had my spare tire sitting vertically and it was actually perfect height to use this as a table or a desk. Um, and this can move on either side. And as I mentioned before, you can completely rotate it. Um, like I said, I, I think this is one of the coolest parts of it. There's other tents that do this, um, but pretty cool. Now, downside, to the way that this is set up is related to how much room you have in here to stand and the fact that it extends the full length of the truck. So one of the reasons why this looks better than some of the other campers is that it doesn't extend as far over the roof line as maybe like a Vagabond or an Alu cab. Um, but the downside is that those guys have room basically from here to the end of it. Uh, to the end of the bed. What that allows you to do is stand in here while the bed's fully deployed. Now, it might not seem like something you'd do, but I think you'd actually use that every single night. Um, and that would be one of the biggest improvements they can make on it. Um, when I was talking about disturbing someone else when you're asleep or when they're sleeping and having to get down, if that gap's there, you can basically just slide off and, uh, and get down without having to move any panels. The other thing is that the bed can be, you know, made basically from standing up outside um and right now you gotta kind of close up at least one side and make the bed um if you're just jumping into sleeping bags not that big of a deal we we'll use a queen size sleeping bag when it's really really cold um and that's a pain in the ass to set up it's also really really big and heavy and so another negative to this tent is 
also a positive, right? Really, really nice that it's so low profile. What's not nice is how tight it is to close up. You can't fit a paper clip in this thing when you're closing it. So you're not gonna leave your bedding, you're not gonna leave pillows up here. Truthfully, I'd be surprised if you could even leave like a really thin sheet up here while closing it. Um, I believe they've made some improvements to it. This one has a three inch foam mattress, which I actually think is really comfortable. The girlfriend thinks it's comfortable. Um, we've never had any complaints about comfort in terms of the pad. Um, it's a little narrow, but that's more the truck, I think, than the tent. There's uh, maybe one other tent out there that's wider. And the reason it's wider is because it has vertical walls for the camper portion, whereas these are tapered slightly in, which again, makes it look better, gives it better lines, but you lose some room in the, the width of the sleeping platform. So you can also lift this up, move it out of the way, slide it under there. I've done that before. And if it's raining out, you hang out in here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. So, um, negatives to it, it's not going to seal the bed as well as a normal camper. Um, but it's much, much stronger than a normal camper. I've had a snug top camper shell that came loose, slid forward and broke my back window. Um, and that was with me having it as secure as I possibly could. Everything was torqued in the battery all correctly. I did it right before the trip and I just went off a big ledge, um, in Colorado and it slid forward and broke the window. Um, this can still do that. Uh, the previous owner of this actually that happened to when he was jumping the truck cause these were loose, but, um, I think it's much harder on these guys. Um, and I think those are much stronger. Uh, speaking of strength again, the snug tops and stuff, if you put a rooftop tent on them, um, you need to have a reinforced roof. You really do. A lot of people don't do it. A lot of people don't know that they reinforce the roofs, but they'll do a, a double layer of honeycomb material, which is basically what this is made out of. And, um, it's much stronger that way. So this guy, um, in terms of strength and whatnot, I never once was worried about sleeping up here. I'm a bigger guy. Um, and you know, two dudes up here who are bigger, I don't think there's ever going to be a concern of them falling through or the tent itself or the camper not being able to hold their weight. Um, so yeah, just little slim, can't put your sleeping stuff in there. For some people that might not be a big deal. The look might be worth it. I personally am selling it. That's one of the reasons I want to be able to leave my sleeping stuff in here. Um, I used to like being able to do that with the, the old traditional rooftop tent. Can't do it with this guy. So giant sleeping bag or two sleeping bags end up in here, which doesn't stay that clean, which means they're dirty. So instead of putting them in here, put them in the truck. Again, takes room in the truck too. So not ideal there. So we usually kept in the back seat. I removed both back seats. We'd put two full-size pillows, two sleeping bags, or a single sleeping bag, um, some blankets. We'd put those over there, and uh, it would take up kind of the whole 40 side of the seat. Um, let's see. My cover and everything. Talked about the holes up there that I'm not in love with, the way that it secures. And these aren't normal buttons, and they're not going to come loose. I will tell you that. Um, they're really strong. They're directional, so they have to be put on and taken off a certain way. Um, they're not just going to come loose on you. Um, there's some straps up here to roll the tent sides up. Um, the tent material itself on this, you know, honestly, pretty good. I said it's really quiet in the wind. Um, I don't feel a ton of cold coming through the material itself. Um, it's more so through these, these gaps right here. Um, you might think you might get wet because of those gaps, but this is a channel for water and it does a good job of keeping you dry. I've camped it in the rain. It's a little loud because the hard top, but so are tents. Um, not as loud as that. And yeah, um, overall I'd say, you know, for the money, it's pretty cool. Um, looks really good. A lot better looking than a lot of the other options out there. Um, but not necessarily as functional as I would like. So who's this for? I think the owner Graham and his buddy who started the company, um, I think they do Baja surf trips. I think if you're a single dude or your girlfriend doesn't like camping and you sleep by yourself most of the time, especially if you have a dog. This is a rad camper. Um, it's not as expensive as those other ones. Weather in Baja is a lot better than it is somewhere really cold. Um, that being said, like I said, people use these in Montana and Alaska, so maybe I'm just a wimp. 
but uh, I think the sleeping setup is uh, not ideal for two people, which I think that's why they do sell a ladder so that you can come in through here. Um, but at that point, you know, one of the biggest perks for me is being able to stand in here and climb into it. And I can't do that um, while leaving everything closed. So yeah, um, you know, nothing wrong with it really. It's, I think it's just mostly preference stuff. Um, you know, do you like the look of this one that much more than maybe a Vagabond or an Alucad? If you do, then you know, those are some of the sacrifices you gotta make, the way that the dent is attached. Um, if you need something super, super white, lightweight, and you're trying to keep your truck extremely light like I was, um, then I think it's a really good option. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'll post some pictures of stuff. Um, definitely didn't hate it owning it. It was just uh, not 100% what I was looking for. Um, yeah. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, post some more pictures, like I said. And yeah, have a good one. Um, a couple more notes. So the, the panels themselves, right? So these hinges on the first 150 or so campers, um, it's having issues and it can break. And I have another video showing how to repair it and how it breaks or where it breaks. Um, the other downside for me that I never really got over and they were gonna rebuild my camper, but COVID happened um, to take care of, you know, the hinge. But the doors themselves, because they're so lightweight, because they're aluminum, even though they're reinforced here and here, they're pretty flimsy. And it's just, it's unnerving. And when you open the panel, you know, if I have a snug top, I have zero concern of opening the panel with one hand and just letting it fling up. Um, I think if you talk to the manufacturer, they recommend that you use two hands and kind of distribute force evenly. It's an expensive camper. It's almost $7,000. I don't think you need instructions to open a door or you should need instructions to open a door. I think, you know, when I buy a snug top, they don't say open with one hand. I think that was one of the biggest reasons why I eventually sold it. Now, I believe they said they resolved the issues with hinges. I think they're very, very confident in it. I haven't heard of a single person having an issue since they've replaced them. And that's great. Um, because it's, it's a cool camper. But um, I don't like the idea that you have to be more, more careful with something that's built so rugged that is considered, you know, race truck parts or race car parts as they sometimes refer to it. Um, but they put a lot of thought into it. Like these latches are, are great. Um, they mark everything when they ship it and make sure everything's lined up and secure. And you can tell they take a lot of pride in it. And the doors, you know, I hope they have a solution for it in the future. Or, you know, maybe now that they've fixed the hinges, they don't really care how you open it. I don't know. Um, but that's another thing that, you know, to me is a big negative. So that's really it, guys. They make them in a few different colors, um, a standard black, a white, and a gray. This is a custom black that um, they did both the frame and the panels in that black. Uh, a buddy of mine bought this from them and they did that for him. And then I ended up buying it from him because he got a full size truck. But I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've got you guys here. I think that's it. Um, the struts up there are pretty strong. Uh, so I think you no problem putting like a kayak or a couple surfboards up there and opening it up. Um, and I think you could probably get some beefier ones if you ever needed and wanted to throw more weight. Um, yeah, that's really it. So. Thanks for watching. Quick little GFC pro tip. Um, I've got Baja Designs push dome lights up here. And uh, to route the wires really cleanly for the GFC or pretty much anywhere, um, you can get this automotive bulb seal right here. It's a rubber seal that's used for doors pretty much. Um, but you can route the wire through that and it's super clean. So let's see if I can show you guys up in here. Uh, you can't even tell it's there, but there's a wire running through that for the dome lights over there. And uh, yeah, I love it. I think it's the best way to do wires.